All right, so the first thing we need to understand is what a loudspeaker is. Um, you're probably familiar with loudspeakers that use a, a driver, a sort of cone uh, with a magnet and a basket behind it that moves back and forth. If you've ever seen a speaker before, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, and that, that driver, what we call the driver, the, um, that, that cone device, uh, it uses electromagnetism to basically receive an electrical signal that represents the music that we want to play through it. And then it translates that into mechanical behavior using magnetism uh, and some other things that I'm not going to get into. And that physical motion that's generated creates a pressure differential in the air. So we go from an electrical input from your amplifier or your receiver or whatever to mechanical motion of the speaker where the speaker is acting like a, like a motor in physical space. And then we end up creating acoustic energy, which is a, the compression and rarefaction of air. It's, it is, it is mechanical, but you know, you can, in, in some meaningful ways, you can differentiate it from, uh, like the mechanical motion of, of, of a motor or of the speaker itself, it kind of is its own thing. It's sound. It's sound. And we perceive these pressure differentials of the gas in, in the room, the air, um, as a unique phenomenon uh, with, with our ears. And that's the goal of a loudspeaker is basically to convert an electrical representation of sound into mechanical motion that then generates the sound that we'd like to hear. So there's a variety of things that can make loudspeakers more or less effective at accomplishing this. Um, you know, there's a variety of different designs. And when we're talking about any engineering discipline like this, you know, we have to understand that we're bound by the laws of physics. So there's always things that we can do. There's always trade-offs that we can make to sort of, we decide what's, what characteristics are important. Basically, do we want a speaker that's extremely loud? Do we want a speaker that's small and portable? Do we want a speaker that has very deep bass? Um, this is called Hoffman's Iron Law. Those three parameters uh, are probably a pretty decent summary of like the three main trade-offs that go into designing a loudspeaker. And Hoffman's Law basically states that between bass extension Efficiency, which really translates to loudness, uh, you know, at, at the final stage when you're actually using the speaker, and small size and portability, those things are traded off against each other, and you can only really have two of them at once. You can't have all three. It is like a fundamental, inviolable law of physics and acoustics. So you need to decide when you're starting to design a speaker system, what's important? Am I designing a subwoofer? If I'm designing a subwoofer, it doesn't have to be that portable, right? But it does have to have very deep bass extension. So I can decide, well, I'm going to immediately trade off portability and dump that into making, you know, giving it the most bass extension I possibly can. And then I weigh the bass extension and the le the sensitivity or the sound pressure level, I kind of, you know, I massage those against each other until I come to like a reasonable balance between them where it's performing as close to the way I'd like it to as is physically possible. And this fundamentally underpins the design process of, of dynamic loudspeakers. So that's Hoffman's Iron Law. There's really three major aspects that describe the performance of a speaker. Portability and, you know, low weight, low foot, small footprint, those kind of things. That's one. Two is bass extension, the capability to reproduce very deep bass notes, uh, you know, in the sub bass range. And sensitivity or SPL or loudness. We'll define those terms um, in greater detail later, but for now, just think of it as how loud the speaker will play with a given input. So those three things are fundamentally traded against each other. And you can't have them all, but 
if you design a speaker decently, you can have two of them, usually. And that's the important thing to remember. Till next time.